On the sunny slopes of Mount Carmel in northern Israel, overlooking the Mediterranean, sits the town of Zichron Yaakov, the undisputed home of Israeli wine. In and around the town are many tiny boutique wineries, as well as Israel's largest, Carmel Mizrahi. The story of Zichron Yaakov begins in 1882, when 200 Jewish families fled hard times in Romania, following their dreams to the Holy Land. They landed here in what was at that time Palestine, uh, dreaming they're coming to the land of milk and honey. And what they actually found here was rampant malaria and a culture that was so different. This was the Ottoman Empire. The families reached out to French Jewish philanthropist Baron Edmond de Rothschild, owner of Chateau Lafitte Winery in France. Rothschild sent a team to Israel and they discovered the area around what is now Zichron Yaakov was perfect for vineyards. Rothschild said, you know, if this is great wine country, I could send cuttings over here from France. We can plant vineyards and I will build two wineries here. These wineries will provide not only employment for people that are already here, but will promote the possibility of more families coming. Rothschild was primarily a businessman and he had a big vision for the return of kosher sacramental wine to Israel. Remember wine was not produced here since biblical times. The first winemaker was Noah when he came off the ark. He planted the first vineyard. The idea was to export the wine to Cairo, to, to Damascus. The first branch of Carmel was opened in Warsaw. Rothschild faced unique challenges. It was a Muslim Islamic country. Uh, alcohol is not really looked upon very favorably. And basically the Turks said to Rothschild, you want to make your wine, go ahead. But you'll have to take care of us. Hecht showed me the early winery's accounting ledgers that had been found recently after not being opened for more than a hundred years. Frequent entries were labeled bakshish, or bribe. A car for the governor of Jerusalem, uh, horses for the sheikh, here's another, uh, the bakshish is everywhere. Here's a gift of four cars for the sheikh. A car was a big deal in 1894, remember. The Carmel winery quickly became one of the largest in the world at that time, and until today all its wines are kosher. From the pressing of the grapes, as soon as the juice begins to flow, till a bottle of wine is sealed, only Sabbath observant Jewish people can directly handle the wine. Rothschild dug these cellars in 1892, which kept the fermenting wines at the correct low temperature. This was the first industry in Israel to have telephone and electricity. And we can even see down here, you see the remnants of the, the little pieces of wood where the Telephone wires used to come across. All wines used to age in oak, and these days each of these oak barrels costs over $1,100. The less expensive wines ferment in climate-controlled steel vats now, which can each hold up to 200,000 liters. If you go to any winery, whether it's California, South Africa, Australia, you're going to see these stainless steel vats. It reminds us a bit more like a chemical plant than a winery, but this is what you're going to see in wineries nowadays, even in Europe. Carmel produces over 15 million bottles a year, but that didn't prevent one of its specialty wines, a Shiraz, from recently winning a global competition at the Decanter World Wine Awards in London. And we're talking about competing with Shirazes from some of the best growing regions in the world for Shiraz, like Australia, South Africa, New Zealand, uh, California, Chateau Notepap. So it was a big, big honor for us. We're still somewhere up in the clouds over that. So. The Shiraz Kayumi 2006. 